Deck Masters Week 1, we are on our way to the uh, fourth match of the day between Colento and Kufdon. Kufdon, an unknown player by all accounts as far as I'm aware. He is from Finland and he did play in the ISF uh, World Championship Finnish Qualifier. So that's a very specific thing. He qualified through the uh, the brackets to get into this tournament. And he's going to face off for his first match of the week, uh, or of the event rather, against Colento. So that's a huge match for him. If he wins against that, it's going to be a pretty good confidence boost, I guess. Mm -hmm. And for those of you who I'm sure all know Kleno, he's just an absolute powerhouse when it comes to Hearthstone. I really don't know if any other player has held rank 1 legend as much as Kleno. He just makes a new deck for fun and all of a sudden he's rank 1 legend. It's just kind of what he does. Yeah, it's actually really impressive because you'll see him play, you know, a very, a very standard, um, say, mage list. Uh, and suddenly, you know, he drops down to 158 legend and he's like... Okay, let's make a rogue deck. And then he builds a rogue deck and he adds in some random card like a kidnapper and he's rank one legend for all of an hour with that deck and then he can hold it for a bit until people start figuring it out. It's like he'll make the strangest deck sometimes and just top the ladder. So that's really impressive mm -hmm. to me. And I also want to mention that he did play Priest. Um, one of the few players who kept playing Priest during what would be considered like the dark ages of Priest. He's played in and, many and I, I gotta say, I love his reasoning for bringing Priest. Um, I actually met him personally at the ESL Legendary Series, and I, of course I had to ask him, I'm like, why do you keep bringing Priest? And he looks at me, he's like, I like Priest. <laughs> that is <laughs> his reason. sick reasoning. And the funny thing is, if you were to make an official interview with him, you wouldn't get any more information than that. All right, so on to the first game. Uh, the classes for both players, Kalento brought Rogue Druid Warlock and his Druid is banned. Kufdon brought Warrior Mage Warlock and his Warrior is banned. So both players are going to be sharing the Warlock as a played class, whereas Kalento will have Rogue to Kufdon's Mage. So we do see that Kaleno is running a card in Hunter that we have not seen for quite a while. Um, I really cannot remember the last time I saw tracking in a Hunter deck. W what do you think about the card? I'm um, actually impressed that he brought it because I've seen it on ladder. I think, uh, funny enough, it was uh, in the Deathlord deck. Well, <laughs> uh, <laughs> there it is. Where I was going to say, where is Deathlord I... deck coming from? <laughs> It came out of nowhere, and honestly, if you don't know you're playing against it, I am telling you right now, you will lose to it. It like most of the time, it's going to take you off guard so hard that you will just get punished very severely. Do you happen to know who is the person who first came up with this idea? I but I don't know. It might have been posted on Hearthbone. I mean, if you go check there, it's probably up there because I ran into about four of them. So it's got to have been, you know, popularized somehow. I like I couldn't so tell you who did it. We get to see another um, match of Freeze Mage versus Hunter, and I guess this is pretty similar to the first game we saw between Orange and yeah, Gara. The, yeah, Gara and Orange had the exact same matchup here. Uh, a mid-range Hunter with Deathlord versus a Freeze Mage, which was uh, quite interesting. Doomseer came out of that Deathlord. Let's see if the same can happen again. Uh, not a bad, not a bad start. So do you think he frostbolts the snipe juggler and uses a bit of his damage to actually kind of clear up the board here? Or do you think he wants to uh, be a little more hesitant? I like Personally, I would not mind seeing a Doom, just a drop Doomsayer right now. What do you think? Yeah. I think Doomsayer makes a lot of sense because without the, um, the Owl, you're going to be able to transition into your secret turns. And it might sound weird to say, hey, why is he not frostbolting this instead of Doomsaying? Um, the reason is Mage has, like Freeze Mage has very, very specific amount of burst. They can't just waste it away. Uh, so mm -hmm. when you do tr throw away a Frostbolt, you're potentially throwing away a win condition for the later game. So what do you think Kaleno does in this position? Yes, um, Huffer kills a Doomsayer is very simple. I mean... Do you take that chance? No, or I do don't. Or do you just attack face into your power? I think that's a safer I, play here. Yeah. You're getting 5 damage in, and why not? I mean, it's too too much to risk, and you're getting a good shredder drop next turn if you want it. But great heads up play by Koofden. Now he can actually drop the. Ooh. So I guess now that you draw the Arcane Intellect, do you still like the Ice Barrier? I would have played Arcane Intellect, but then again, you might be under pressure very, very fast. Like, you're under the gun very quickly uh, against the Hunter, so maybe developing that secret as early as possible so that your Mad Scientist can actually get you the second one as early as you can uh, may be a good idea. So he does use the Frostbolt after all, but on a Shredder instead. 
Oh wow. Kill command value. Six damage kill command. Yeah. I doubt he'll use it, but you can always hope. So would you play the creeper for the extended damage here? I, I think with Leoth you absolutely do, but getting in your hero power as much as possible is very important in this matchup. Yeah, I want to point out like the Lothev from Kalento. Funny enough, Lothev is coming back um, in the meta. For some reason, Lothev is like for a bit was considered some uh, like a good option, but not almost a mandatory one. And for some reason, it's come back so strong uh, in the mm -hmm. past two weeks. I I've, I've been like really impressed with the fact that it kind of I don't know Will is way back in. Exactly. I've always been a huge fan of Lothab. I've tried to fit it into things like even like Patron Warrior because it's such an effective card, just clearing up taunts like Belcher, but also its effect freezes your opponent. I, I think it falls under um, a little bit of, I, I don't know what to call it, but like the Curse of the Unknown. It's cards like that is you don't know how good they are because you can't figure out what it stopped your opponent from doing most of the time. So you really, really, really never know how truly effective a card like that is. Other cards that do the same thing is stuff like Nerebu, Weblord, um, Mana Wraith. Mana Wraith was obviously not played at all until someone uh, named, by the name of Grindstone played it in Shaman and took rank 1 Legend for close to three weeks straight, in which case it finally came into the meta a little bit. It, it's... It's really hard to tell how good some of those cards are. Yeah, up until the point where you've actually seen it do much. But right now, Kalento knows that this is going to be a sick loath of turn. You can't even get Nova on this board. You're going to get all that damage in no matter what happens. Do you expect to see just an anti-heal bot and maybe even a Blood Mage to throw it down I, for Cycle? I, yeah, I would play Blood Mage for Cycle here. Unless uh, Kalento's got other plans, but I'd be surprised. I, I almost wish we would see some Echo Mage. Um, a bit more of it because I feel like it's got the um, the benefits of freeze mage without the drawback mm -hmm. of like I limited amount love, of burst. I, I loved different types of mage builds such as echo mage and giant's mm -hmm. mage. I played. I remember I actually showed you the deck a while ago, a giant's mage that I personally played for quite a while. Um, right. Decks like that are so hard to play against, especially oh, in a match like this where you're playing against one person, so you just don't know what to expect. Yeah, you don't have time to adapt. It's like when Mail Mage became popular for just a little bit, right? That was a crazy time. Uh, and it was in many tournaments. Mm -hmm. Alright, so we have the Alex Straza already in Kuvdon's hand, so that's going to give him a bit of leeway. But Kalento is never going to play that Death Lord into the board. It's oh, kind I, of I'd have to agree with that. Like, why bother? I imagine a high main hero power and just everything face, to be honest. What do you think? <laughs> I mean, it sounds like a hunter straightforward play. I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't see why not is the thing, right? Why would you not? You've seen two eyes barriers. I, I have uh, to say one of my favorite posts on Reddit of all time was the one where a person said how to play hunter and taped their, like a piece of paper on their screen where all it showed <laughs> was hero power face. and your opponent's face. <laughs> yeah. You run into problems when you run into taunts, but then I guess you just have to, to lose those games. Um, I mean, you can probably orient yourself with sound, though. Like, I played Blindfolded. I'm pretty sure I could play Hunter Blindfolded. Yo, what do you think Kalena's worried about here? Um, winning. Wait, what just happened? Hunter was not on Kalento's deck list, so it's going to be counted as a loss. Okay. Oh, there we there go. There seems so... to have been an issue. Apparently, yeah, that's right. Kalento brought Rogue Druid and Warlock. There was no Hunter in the list. So it looks like Kuftin will be taking game one by default. I guess Kaleno, as a player who obviously is in quite a few tournaments, may have mixed this up and brought the incorrect deck set to this one. All um, right, well, that's going to give uh, Kuftin a win against Kalento. The Rogue Druid Warlock, no Hunter in Kalento's lineup. How did we not notice that, um, Dart? I was actually commenting on the, the lineups that Kalento brought. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. So I guess that means that Kuftan won with his Freeze Mage and now only has a Warlock left. Meanwhile, Kaleno will have to go to his two original decks, uh, one of them Rogue and the other one Warlock. So it's really going to depend, obviously, on what type of Warlock Kuftan has, but also what type of Warlock Kaleno has. Um, Do you pin Kaleno on... I mean, Kaleno plays everything. He's played a ton of Maligos Warlock recently on stream um, for some reason. 
Uh, Rogue is also a deck that I usually don't see him play very much, so I'm a little surprised there. So I think because he banned Warrior... Ooh, that's actually an interesting choice, then. What type of Warlock would you bring that you would actually ban Warrior with? Maligos, maybe. How bad is it? Then again, you've got Double Heal Bot, the Hellfire... Yeah, exactly. Malagos is usually built to be patron. It's one of the original. Exactly. So as we see from Kalento, we see a... I saw a Kazan Mystic. Zombie Chow and a Kazan Mystic. It's a really powerful start for him, though. Double Imp Gang boss in the opening hand. It doesn't get much better, especially against the handlock, where you have the time to play those things and aren't too worried about anything else. But is this some type of mid-range Warlock deck that we haven't seen in the past? By Kalento, Kalento yes, that's very possible. I know that he was the almost initiator of... No, this is probably Maligos. Azure Drake kind of sells it. But then again... I, but Kazan seen Mystic isn't that things. much of a necessary card in a Maligos build, so I'm not sure. Against Hunter, it does help a lot. But it's not a mandatory card by far, you're right. Uh, so if it is Malagos Warlock, though, he will have major advantage over Cooch, and especially if he draws into his big game hunters, um, and he does have an owl for the first Drake, which gives him a tremendous advantage in the early game. Yeah, a big difference here might be the, the amount of owls that uh, Malagos Warlock is willing to run here, because sometimes you'll see lists with only the one owl, and kalento has been favoring those for a while, and he picks up the Mortal, Mortal Coil. Mortal Coil top deck, what an incredible card to get there. Um... Question okay. is, what is he worried about? With two four health minions on the board, he's not worried about an Ancient Watcher Shadow Flame just yet, nor is he really that scared of a Hellfire. Kuvdon is taking an awfully high amount of damage for a guy without Molten Giants. Oh man. Uh, there's eight on the board from Kalento. So six away from Lethal here, which isn't. That much to Argus, muster. if he drops into a soul fire, it'll end it. Do you think Koopton actually just used his heal bot here? Mm -hmm. I'm thinking heal bot is the safer play, and then you can maybe get a giant play next turn with the uh, Sun Fury. But you also have to realize that even dark bombing the zombie chow kind of does the same thing. The question is, what do you do to follow that up? Mountain Giant is risky, but then again, you have no idea what your opponent's playing. I like Hillbot a lot more here. I mean, all the minions on the opponent's side, for all you know, have only uh, the two attack. Now, of course, things will change in a second. You can tell that Kufjin really just has no idea what he's up against just yet. And he's going to figure Azure it out. Drake, exactly. With this Azure Drake coming down, I think he'll realize that it will be the Malagos build. Oh god, there's a big game hunter now in Kalento's hand. And Kalento's just trying to push out his opponent. Just plays a Drake, no defensive Argus. Um, flooding the board, apparently there is no AoE based on the plays that uh, were made by Kuvton, but he did and pick up a watcher. watcher. What a top deck to get him back into this game. Kaleno was dominating until Kuvton actually drew that card in order to clear the board here. And he's going to transition into a turn 7 with Dr. Boom, or even if he wants to. Uh, and nothing too threatening, he could play Emperor Thorson to get future value. Invest in the future. Now, what do you think about Kaleno's option to tap there versus actually just playing another Azure Drake? I think you can weave in the the tap next turn, no matter. Like it, it's kind of the same thing as every other deck where the heal power matters a lot, especially for Malagos Warlock, because you're looking for those damage spells to combo. And as a result of being a combo deck, those are even more important than they otherwise would be. Mm -hmm. Also, by keeping the Drake in hand, it actually allows his uh, Corruptor to get value in the following turns. Right. Is this such a turn, or is this a... This has to be... Most of the time, it's going to be a BGH play, is my assumption. I can imagine Twilight Drake BGH, and really just going face, maybe, at this point. He has, he's probably going to be thinking about whether or not he wants to kill off. Oh, oh and unfortunately, it does hit the 2-2 two, two Imp, the one that actually hasn't attacked up to that point. So Kaleno is not going to be happy about that uh, bomb hit. Kuvdon finally finds a Molten Giants for future problems. The thing is, very often against Malagod, you are dead uh, by the time your health hits a, po a threshold where Molten is free. Because uh, they usually try tend to, at least, uh, kill you right away. So we'll have exactly, to that's one that of the reasons that Malagod... Mal 
that's one of the reasons Malagos Warlock became so popular is because of how well it does against Handlock. It not only has the uh, owls and big game hunters to take care of a lot of the Handlock's threats, but it has the behind the taunt burst that's capable with a big Malagos play. And what will the bomb hit? It kills? No, it hits for the one damage. That, that is, is not good. And there's 10 damage on Kalento's board now. He's four away, so Soulfire Soul is Soulfire will end it here. Indeed it will, and that is and he not it. has the ability it. to tap for it also. Yeah, when do you not tap here anyway? Yeah, exactly. I expect to see a tap for the win. Oh, and that's and he the game. It. Kalento oh. will take game two. Oh, Kalento with a yes, sorry. sorry. I, I don't Kalento. know that. Oh, man. I, I don't think I've ever seen Kalento PM, ever. That, that smirk from Kaleno was fantastic, <laughs> I have to say. Oh, he's a god at Cardstone Wizard Poker, but that's that's what we know. So, one more game will be happening here. Either of them will take the next one. There's one more deck for Kalento. He's got a Rogue left, and Kuvdon is going to be stuck with his Handlock. As we said earlier, if this is a Tinker Sharp Sword Oil Rogue, which it very likely is, it is pretty favored, uh, well, by a slight margin. Slight margin, I'd say, against Handlock, but not by much. It really depends how the draws line up, uh, but a good sprint will, you know, counterpoint the lack of card advantage, or the card advantage, rather, that the Warlock gets, so the Rogue can burst everything very fast. And I, and I do have to say, with an experienced player like Kaleno, I would have to give the odds to the Rogue in this matchup. Um, and a pretty good starting hand. The question is, what would you keep in Kaleno's hand in this position? The Sap and throw the rest out? Really? You would actually keep the sap in this matchup here? It's handlock, right? Mm-hmm. I'd personally... What, what am I looking for words. here, basically? So, obviously, all three of those cards can be good, but I think the most necessary thing you need for Kaleno is actually minions, so dropping the entire hand like he's done, I'd have to agree with. Getting those Violet Teachers is huge in this matchup in order to put on early pressure that Kuftan has to deal with. Yeah, well, speaking of Kuvdan, he did find a really good hand to count to contest those minions we were speaking of. Oh, Kalento with the South Sea deck hand for that burst. You know, that's a card that uh, a lot of Tinker Sharp's World lists have cut for some mm -hmm. weird reason. But a one of is always uh, always good to have. Exactly, and I've actually talked to quite a few players about this to see what their arguments are about South Sea. And it's a little bit weird. For me, I personally think South Sea is just such a necessary card, the burst damage that it can do from hand. Um, a lot of the matchups that Rogue struggles lit with, sometimes like a face hunter, South Sea just works as a turn one drop that'll allow you to gain advantage against them. Meanwhile, for control matchups where they might not let you get a board, the South Sea gives you the burst damage to finish them off also. Um, so I just think it's such a good card for uh, the current builds of Rogue. So Kalento pausing there at the end of his turn when he's got really nothing else to do than dagger up. Maybe trying to mind games his opponent to thinking he's got Earthening Farseer or the SI7 as tempo play. Mm -hmm. I thought that was kind of interesting. But then again, he might have just been alt tab. Here's a question. Does play. Kalento have enough damage to kill off this Drake the first turn between... Well, maybe now. Now? I think you start with backstab prep fan. Prep sprint is so good. I don't know if I'd ever pass Plus. on prep sprint on this board. I mean, I, I, I don't think there's ever going to be a better time for you. You're equalizing the hand disadvantage right away, and you're potentially getting winning cards like a sap on a taunted minion. And he finds the prep tinkers with blade flurry already. Oh, man. Now, it, is he going to prep some... I, you is, have to do it. Right you have now. to stab that Drake. Oh man, Kalento with the plays. Oh, this Backstab board advantage. Deadly. This the... is so insane. That full board clear from Kalento, and then he's got an easy way to just completely punish his opponent. No Shadow Flame can be done with if he. Oh, he doesn't clear? I, I'd have to agree with that. Um... You wouldn't Shadow Flame Coil in this position? So he's coining, Shadow Flaming. Dark, Dark bombing. Bombing. Yeah. Okay. So he doesn't care about that Ancient Watcher. I guess Kalento was expecting the de I was expecting Backstab to kill the Deadly. Uh, with mm -hmm. the Deadly to kill the Watcher. How much damage does Kalento have right now? This is... With the, so with the South Sea Deckhand, there's, <laughs> there's a ton. Okay, so with South Sea Oil right now, the Deckhand goes to 5, plus another 3, so 6. He'd get him down to 9 health. 
he'd be able to flurry eviscerate and kill him. Yeah. And kill him. No yeah, that's... Here. Whoa. Doesn't want to let the Moltens get taunted up. But a heal bot's picked up in the meantime. So how afraid are you of another sap play? Because that depends. That that will determine whether you play the Belcher or the heal bot. I don't know. I, I have to say I'm still surprised that Kaleno didn't attack face there. Yes, the Moltens could have kind of taunted up, but the, he would have needed taunted up Moltens and heal bot to get out of that. Um, but I guess in Kukan's current position, he really should consider... Obviously, Belcher is scary because Sap would end it for him. But we know this. Have no pressure. Yeah. But next turn, he can probably... Like, if the, the Hillbot somehow... Like, if he gets hit in the face, he can next turn just go for the Molten Giant Taunt. Or the Belcher, if he needs to. Like, to taunt up... That him. is true, but then Kaleno will still get off the hit, allowing him to Blade Flurry off all the Giants anyways. Mm-hmm. Well, Kalento picks up a backstab to start the combo sequence. Let's see if that... Uh... So he's close to lethal. If he gets deadly up right now, he's got 918. He's got 22 with Eviscerate and maybe a bit more. Like, a prep would basically make the game over. But there has already been two preps played. One of the sprint, one of the first tinkers. Do you just backstab? I mean... Uh, okay, so lives? I think I really like... No, I think I like Backstab, SI, and Tinkers. It forces Koopton to have an answer to uh, the SI agent, while still giving Kaleno the one damage off lethal the following turn. So I guess he does go with the uh, a little bit more of a conservative play, trying to get the Tinkers oil and actual damage into the face here. Question is, how does Koopton respond? Lothab, Sun Fury, run away. I agree. <laughs> Maybe I'm being a bit too conservative about this, but I would be very nice. scared. Whoa, okay. Nice. So health doesn't matter, or does it? He thinks Lothar is going to be enough, is basically what he's saying at this point. That, that's what we know. He's saying, oh my goodness. Double Eviscerate Flurry on a 9 damage weapon next turn. So I think at this point you go face. Well, then again, Kalento, is, he seems determined to keep the Tinkers for 9 damage as, a, as an option to wipe out Giants. But I would still but attempt to punch face, at least, to force exactly those Giants out to get a big, better board wipe. The, the problem with like holding on to it right now is when the Giants come out, then all of a sudden you use the Flurry and don't get the extra damage. So by attacking now and Flurrying next turn is 12 versus doing it later with a 9 damage, if he gets Giants out, oh, then it's only 9 because you get the Flurry and can't really get the face in with the other one. So I'm really happy that Kaleno is actually attacking face right now. I, I think that is the correct move. In the yeah, I'm board. happy because it, uh, it confirms what I thought was good. I mean, up until this point, that I, I've been wrong about so many things about the lines of play that he took. But again, with players like Kaleno, it's both of us can be completely wrong, and it, it's impossible to understand his thought process. It's practically you heard this guy, it's impossible. It is not possible. And it, it's hard to say that a player makes a mistake when it's really difficult to understand what they're like trying to go through and what they're planning on doing for the following few turns. Yeah, you do your best, but ultimately it boils down to guesswork. All right, so I guess at this point he's just going to try to go all in on the, the taunting up, but we know for a fact that's not going to do anything with that double eviscerate. And Kuvdan looking really focused slash uh, somewhat angry. But... So take a look at this. Kaleno has to glue, have a default loss, Kuvdan going up 1-0, and then seems like he easily took these following games. Uh, Kaleno was so composed throughout the entire time, uh, played very well, I gotta give it a hand to him. And just Koop just never gave Koopton an opportunity to really come back in the series. Yeah, I don't think I don't even know that the lineup was that stacked. I mean, sure the rogue was actually pretty decent against Handlock. We know that for a fact. The draws really lined up for Kalento in that second game, but even the first game, um, Warlock versus Warlock was still not that huge of an advantage at that point because it wasn't. You know, there was no Malagos involved. It was really just tempo exactly. plays by Kalento coming in there and uh, taking the win over over Kufton. So. 
Congratulations to Kalento again. I guess again, always systematically congratulate. It seems like I say that a lot when I commentate. Congratulations to Kalento for taking the win, uh, going up two one against Kuvdar in this first smash that he plays. Um, again, before we go for a short break, I'd like to remind you that this is powered by. Squarespace, which is a website you can visit if you'd like to make your own website without having to, you know, code anything. If you want to have your own little place to go on the internet, you can go there. They will have a lot of layouts, designs that are very clean and very cheap. So check them out. They are our sponsor with Vulcan, the largest fantasy esports league online at this point. So we'll be taking a short break. We'll be back with the fifth and last match of the day Trump versus Harudra, a player that I do not know. And we'll see what those players brought for us. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> 